Hello, uh, my name is Dan Mihai. Uh, Peter, my colleague, and I uh, will talk about um, uh, a couple of new uh, Azure services that provide confidential container functionality. Um, first of all, why do we need confidential containers at all? Uh, you might be wondering. Uh, so the problem is containers sometimes have to use um, uh, IP uh, built into data and or code uh, or PII or some other type of data that is regulated by various um, governments and so on. Um, at the same time, uh, containers get, get executed typically on a host OS that is not attested, is not verified by the customer, which means, uh, you know, since there's no security boundary between the container and the host operating system, whoever provides the host operating system has access to the data inside the container, at least data in use uh, inside the container. Um, also, um, the entire uh, container management stack is uh, trusted by the, uh, by the uh, customer because, again, those components have access to the workload inside containers. Um, so this is a relatively large um, uh, you know, code base that has access to this confidential data. Um, based on the problems that I've just mentioned, uh, we came up with a few requirements for our, uh, you know, Azure services for, for uh, uh, confidential containers. Um, we decided that we had to uh, ensure the confidentiality and integrity of data in use inside those containers uh, by using uh, hardware-based uh, TEs, right? So when I talk about confidentiality, uh, I mean basically uh, encrypting the memory of the container. Right, with keys that are not available outside of the TE. So that way, only software inside the TE is able to decrypt the memory uh, and get to the, the confidential data. Um, integrity is pretty much about uh, rejecting attempts um, of the host to, uh, to modify uh, the data in use. Uh, so, uh, the data inside the T, uh, the, the memory inside the T uh, cannot be modified by components on the host OS. Then we wanted a minimum, a minimal, transparent, and auditable TCB. Uh, so this is all open source code uh, with a relatively small attack surface that runs inside the TE uh, that can be audited. Uh, and measured and so on uh, by um, the owners of the workloads. Um, we needed several components to be remotely attestable or remotely verifiable, right? So uh, the properties of the TE itself uh, must be attestable remotely um, so the customer can verify the kind of hardware that is being used uh, to, to, to run the, their uh, workload. And this is not you know, uncommon. Uh, pretty much all the TEs that I have seen can be remotely attested. Um, so then we, we have to, to, to ensure the integrity of the operating system and of the container uh, management code uh, inside the TE. So that again has to be um, measured and made sure that it's the, 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 the runtime uh, code that the customer um, expected to be used in their um, confidential, uh, for their co confidential containers. Um, and then uh, the container images themselves. So the, the, the actual workload has to be verified at runtime and make sure that nobody uh, you know, modified either the, the data or the code or, or the configuration of those uh, of those containers. Uh, then we figured that we had to make the configuration immutable after startup because if we allow configuration changes uh, after uh, attestation, then you know that kind of negates the value uh, of, uh, of attestation. Uh, and then uh, it's common to run multiple Kubernetes pods on a single operating system, on a single host. Um, 
In our case, uh, we're going to run each pod with its own operating system. So there's no sharing, pods cannot attack each other, cannot influence the behavior uh, of each other because they run in separate uh, virtual machines, basically. Okay, now I'm just gonna go over a container trusted execution environment, which Dan was just describing. And this execution environment is gonna apply both to our serverless offering, Azure Container Instances, and also the Kubernetes offering, AKS Kata Containers with Confidential Computing. And the great thing about Confidential Containers is customers can lift and shift their existing applications into either a pod or a container group without needing to utilize specialized programming models or make application modifications. So customers can really quickly take their existing containerized applications and bring them into a confidential computing environment. And as Dan was mentioning before, each of these trusted execution environments gets its own hardware-based data in use encryption key. And these are created every time a new container group or pod starts up. And we've implemented a concept called a confidential computing enforcement policy in order to provide integrity of the execution environment itself. So when these container groups and pods start up, if any configuration is changed, we'll fail the deployment, helping to protect sensitive data that could otherwise be exfiltrated from the um, container group itself. And we've also provided a bunch of open source and platform integrated sidecars to make it easy to fetch these hardware measurement reports and integrate with other attestation services. And now I'm gonna jump into a quick and kind of fun demo. So confidential computing is great for a lot of different scenarios like machine learning training and ML inference in industries such as healthcare and finance. But in this fun demo, I'm gonna deploy a Minecraft server to a confidential container. And you might think, why would you deploy a Minecraft server? Why does that need to be confidential? But if you think about serious gamers, they wanna make sure they're connecting to a trusted server where nothing has been modified. And with confidential containers, we can provide that data confidentiality and that data integrity that customers want to see. So I have three different container images in this container group. Um, one being a Minecraft container, another being a Flask server, and the third being a endpoint to allow me to fetch information from my container group. And to start off with, um, we provide integration with the Azure CLI um, through an extension called the Confidential Computing Extension. And what's happening as I run this command is we're taking all of the information I've defined in my ARM template here. So things like the container images, we're pulling those down, we're measuring all of the different layers, all of the um, environment variables, um, any container commands within the container group, and we're adding that to our confidential computing enforcement policy so that when the container group starts up, we can measure it, compare it to the pre-generated policy, and only actually release sensitive data once that policy has been validated, um, either through uh, your own attestation service or with the Microsoft Azure attestation service. And if you take a look at this existing ACI container here, there's actually only two properties you need to make it confidential. One being the SKU, which is confidential, and the other, which is this confidential computing enforcement policy. So the tooling's gonna automatically inject that policy based on the properties of my ARM template. And now that I have this policy, it's actually ready for deployment on Azure. And for the sake of time, I pre-deployed a container and we can see it's up and running with the SKU confidential, and we have an IP address that we can actually uh, connect to the container group from. And when we're using our platform integrated sidecars here, I can make a REST request to the uh, container group itself, and what you're seeing here in the result is a hardware-generated measurement report, so this contains information about the CPU itself, all of the application components, 
which can then be validated either through your own attestation service, or we also um, integrate directly with the Microsoft Azure attestation service. And here you can fetch a token, a customer can validate the certificate chains match what I'm expecting, the application matches what I'm expecting, and then they're ready to go. And then lastly, I'll just show you can actually connect to that Minecraft server, which I just deployed. So this is up and running in a confidential container group on Azure. And um, yeah, you'll be able to join a confidential Minecraft server, which is pretty cool. And everything works. So now I'm going to hand it off back to Dan to do a cool demo on uh, AKS Kata containers. OK, so this is the, the second service that we were referring to at the beginning, uh, AKS with Kata containers. Um, this is a product that we are working on uh, together with the open source community. So um, we are collaborating with the uh, Confidential Containers Group in CNCF, uh, with the Kata Containers Group, and uh, several others, uh, Cloud Hypervisor Group, uh, the Kernel, and so on. Um, so uh, if you remember, we, we talked about the, the TCB uh, software having to be limited um, in size and in attack surface. Um, that's what we did here. So we, we, we have the components in green there um, that are part of customer's TCB. Th those are, are needed for you know, executing the containers and for uh, managing the containers. Um, those uh, you know, limited uh, size components are executed inside the TE. Uh, the TE is typically a, a, a virtual machine based on uh, technology such as AMD Sev SNP. Um, so basically, for each pod created by an AKS ho host, um, another VM, a child VM, gets created to host the actual pod uh, containers. Um, therefore, we're, we're keeping many components that traditionally were part of TCB, those on the, on the left side with the, the blue color, those are outside of the TCB. They're, they're, they don't have direct access to the TE, and therefore they don't have access to, uh, to the pod memory uh, and, and so on. Uh, this includes the hypervisor, by the way. That is uh, Microsoft hypervisor, MSHV at the bottom. Um, the hypervisor itself is not able to you know, uh, access the data inside the TE. Um, the main interface uh, between the untrusted world to the left and the trusted world inside the TE um, is the Kata Agent API. So basically, the components from the untrusted world send commands and configuration data uh, kinds, of, uh, kinds of information to the Kata Agent, and the Kata Agent executes commands on behalf of those uh, untrusted um, components. The problem is um, those, those commands come from an untrusted uh, component uh, from, uh, through the Kata shim uh, and get executed inside the TE. So, uh, you know, uh, without help, uh, that, that, that can easily create an elevation of privilege uh, type of vulnerability here. Um, so to address that, that uh, problem, we created this uh, security policy uh, mechanism. The security policy is a document uh, that describes all the actions that are required to create a customer's pod. So um, each pod gets its own security policy, and then the cut agent, whenever the create container uh, call, for example, comes in, is going to check, is this one of the allowed containers? Is this, you know, uh, uh, are there any unforeseen uh, uh, changes to those container images and so on? So basically, um, the owner of the pod, the owner of the workload, um, provides the security policy uh, to the Kata agent, and that's what guards the TE from 
you know, undesirable interactions with the, with the host. Uh, that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. Um, so let, could we switch to the other input, please? So here, I will uh, build a container image and push it into my own container repository. Uh, as you can see, this is just a copy of the Redis uh, container from Microsoft uh, Container Registry. So I will go ahead and build this image and push it. Hopefully, demo gods will allow me. Okay, so my image is in there. Now, I also have a pod uh, specification YAML file. So let's take a look at that. Um, so my pod just executes this Redis image. That's all there is to it. Not, nothing else very interesting here. So I mentioned that I, as the owner of this pod, have to add a security policy to this pod because otherwise it, it's, it's not going to run in a confidential uh, setup. So to do that, we run a tool, an application provided by AKS um, that automatically generates the appropriate security policy for my pod. So let's see, I will enable, uh, run, let's see, I have it here. So this is the tool, gem policy, it generates the policy and I'm running it with the pod YAML as uh, a parameter, uh, as a command line parameter. Um, I also have uh, enabled some logging uh, for the tool because I would like to, to, to um, you know, take a look at some of the steps that the tool is, uh, is performing. As you can see, a part of the tool work is uh, downloading, um, the container images for, for the, the containers used by my pod, and it's generating DM Verity root hashes for each of those layers. So without getting into many details, each of the container layers is exposed to the, the, the utility VM, to the TE, as a Linux storage device, um, protected by DM Verity. So that means if someone corrupts the information on one of those uh, storage devices, the Linux kernel is going to change, uh, is going to catch that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, undesirable change. So, so far so good. Um, I can run my, my pod and let's take a look at the activity inside the pod. As you can see, the, the container started in my pod, so, so far so good, uh, my, my, my pod is, uh, is working. Um, so now I will simulate an attack uh, to this pod. So in my particular attack, uh, the attacker finds a way to modify the container image in the container repository. So to simulate that, I will Okay, it's another minute or so. Okay, so the idea is uh, I was modify I was going to modify the image, and then the security policy would catch that modification because now uh, layers look different. Uh, they they have a different uh, DM Verity uh, root hash and so on, and the rogue uh, container image gets uh, rejected by the cut agent. And that concludes uh, our demo.